Hello, ladies. How are you? Hello, Myra, Copper, Christine. Who else is out there? Sharon. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone? Sheila, Barb in Illinois. How are you? Let's see. I think Sheila said that she is doing some stitching. What did you say now? I'm ready for some fun. And you've practiced. You've practiced some stitching during the week. Wonderful. I'm so glad. You might add a little bit of ruler work. Good. I'm so glad to be with you again, ladies. It's really fun to meet every week to talk about quilting. I just want to let you know a couple of things. One. I'm trying out a new camera, so hopefully we will have no problems. And I'm trying out a new streaming setting again. I'm hoping no problems. Oh, hi, Valley from Chicago. Yay, you're here too. And what else? Okay, new camera, new streaming settings, and both of these are to improve the quality of the stream. So I am testing that. No game tonight. I didn't have time to put together something new, so we're not gonna have a game, but I am curious. Write in the chat, in the comments, why you made your first quilt. Why did you make your first quilt? And who was it for? What kind of quilt was it? I'm really interested to know what kind of quilts you ladies like and why you started quilting. My first quilt was for my mother. Let's see, any one, I'm just gonna check here on Facebook. We have a few people. Okay, we have someone who's saying that she can't find the live session. She can only get the pre-recorded. I'm gonna send her a quick message. Uh, we are live on YouTube now. Let's see if she can find us. I Hopefully she can. Hey, Yolanda. Hi. So glad you're here. Welcome. You made a baby quilt for your son, Christine. Fabulous. That was your first one. The first quilt was for you. Okay. I need a hobby to sew. Hand pain. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. So that means you can't hand quilt or machine quilt? No sewing at all? Okay. So Sharon says, a friend and I both sew garments. We would like we would look at quilts and thought it was way too hard. We have finally jumped in and bought a quilt in a day book. And you've made a rail fence for your bed. That's a great beginner pattern. Hey, Tina. Hi. Hi, Tina. So glad you're here. She wanted to learn to sew. And the first quilt was Minnie Mouse ever since I've been so inspired in making quilts. You're on your fifth quilt. Congratulations. Fantastic. And Copper says she's always loved quilting, but didn't have any family members who made them. Yeah, I think I'm the first one. My sisters don't sew. Well, they used to sew garments. 
They don't make quilts. They're not crafty at all. You know, when I start to talk quilting, they go silent quickly. <laughs> so they don't do any quilting. They appreciate the craft. Okay, you're working on UFO, Yolanda. Fantastic. And hey, Jenny, how are you? So glad you're here. Baby quilts for children. Quilt in a day. A lot of people started with quilt in a day. Awesome. My first quilt, like I said, was for my mother. I just used what fabric I had on hand and it was home decor fabric. But she loved that little quilt. It was something that she ended up sleeping with. Um, it wasn't very big. It wasn't a bed size quilt, but she loved the heaviness of it and the warmth of it. It was kind of her extra um layer that she would sleep with so a lot of times we make quilts for family members and i'm so glad okay she can't find the she needs the link let me get the link for some reason she can't find the the live session let me send it okay nope that's not it wrong one sorry Okay, hmm. Let me go to my YouTube channel here. Oh, let's see. Okay. Oops. Sorry, ladies, for this interruption, but I don't want uh, our friend to miss our time together. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, go to, did she get here yet? Let's see. Hey, Wilda. <laughs> Hi. Hello, and Joan in Florida. Okay. Hey, Lois, you're here. Awesome. Okay, go to channel then click live all right well i hope she finds us this is benay she's out in california and if some of you ladies are new or you haven't been in the YouTube chat before, greet one another, which I see you're doing. Um, let make sure everyone feels welcome. Tonight, we are going to talk about, oh, the butterflies have been going. Sorry about that. That's probably so distracting. <laughs> uh, we are gonna talk about applique. This was a request from Copper. She wanted to know, how do I machine quilt applique? So first I have to make a confession. I have to make a confession that I'm not a fan of handwork. Um, my friend Wilda was so kind a few, about a year ago, maybe two now, she did a lot of my hand binding. I would machine stitch the top and then she would bind the rest of it. And it was a labor of love on her part because my bindings can be difficult because I use glue and that's a whole nother story. No more glue, Wilda, I promise, if I give you a quilt to hand bind. But anyway, I machine stitch my applique. And because I machine stitch and I don't like needle term because I'm not a hand quilter, I do raw edge applique. Do you do applique? What kind of applique do you like? Do you like needle turn or raw edge or both? Which ones do you like? All right. Hey, Tina, how are you? Can you send me a picture of a recent quilt I'm working on? Sure, you can send it to my email. My email address is on my website. Myra, you like raw edge too. 
Yes, and I use batik fabrics because batiks are tightly woven when I do raw edge. And uh, Yvonne, you're new to applique, okay. Joanne, uh, Joan, you like to hand applique. Hand applique is beautiful and I admire those who do. Um, you've done raw edge, okay. Uh, freezer paper turned applique. Wow, a lot of people are experienced. Okay, she made it, yay. Okay, you made it, good. Oh, I'm so glad. Hello, Marlene. Hi, hi, hi. It's not my thing. You are right about that. I do it occasionally. And the projects that I'm showing you today are ones that I made when I was a Island Boutique Fabric Ambassador. Each month we had to make a project. So we're going to go over each of these projects. And I'm going to show you how I machine quilted them and how I did the applique. Each one is a little bit different. This is a close up of another one we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about this one with the butterfly. The butterfly and the leaf are both from AccuQuilt die cutter. Are you familiar with AccuQuilt? Aha, uh -huh, there we go. I use my AccuQuilt to cut most of my appliques. Copper already answered the question before I asked. Okay, my needle got gummy with one of my iron-ons. Oh no, sorry, sorry to hear that. Remember ladies to always test. Machine stitch applique with blanket stitch. Yep. Sharon, that's one of the techniques we're going to talk about today. All right. Um, okay, so these are the three projects. Let's start with the first one. So like I said, for the leaf, I used the AccuQuilt die cutter for the leaf. Now, when you look at this leaf, look at all those points and turns. I, it's a beautiful leaf, but when I thought about doing a blanket stitch on that, I had nightmares. There's no way that I was going to do a blanket stitch around those leaves. So I did what I normally do is just do a tight stitch all the way around the edges. Now, one of the things that I, you may have heard me say is that you want to learn how to stitch free motion around shapes in a straight line, stitch in a ditch. When you practice those techniques, being able to stitch around this kind of leaf very gingerly and not go too close to the edge and be consistent comes with practice. You may also notice that in this particular project, I cut two leaves. One was black for a shadow. And the second was the actual leaf on top. Okay, uh, you use heat and bond. Uh, steam a seam for having less gunk under the needle. Very good questions. I, Thought some of you might be interested in that. I use heat and bond. I also use sulky. And it depends on the application because some of them are permanent. Again, I would prefer not to have to tear it out. I'd rather have something light and fusible or light and stitchable so I don't have to remove it. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the kind that you rip away or that you leave in when you do applique? Love the shadow. The shadow is amazing. It really adds dimension to the leaf. Copper uses heat and bond. You love the shadow, Sharon, too. Yes, isn't that shadow just amazing? And it's just making the exact same applique and putting one on top of the other. But here's the key. 
the shadow must be the same direction for every piece. So if you have five leaves, all the shadows must go in one direction. You can't have, because the light is coming from that direction, right? So that means the shadows must all go the same direction. Yes, I'm gonna go over that right now. Let's look at the next image. Okay, here you can see how the shadows are all going in the same direction. I did use a stabilizer for each leaf. I did put them down with a, um, a fusible uh, stabilizer. You do machine, okay. You do machine applique and you use an embroidery machine, decorative stitches to stitch it down. Yes, applique can be beautiful. That's it, copper. The shadows must be in the same direction. So you know that the light is coming from one side of the quilt, top, bottom, left, or right, or whatever direction you choose. Let's look at another close up. Look at that. Now, I use different colors of what fall leaves might look like burnt orange, dark burgundy. So that means I had to find threads that match the leaf. So this is when you have to go into your thread stash. Hello, Jacqueline. So glad that you made it. Wonderful. So I stitched around the edge of these leaves because the blanket stitch on this leaf would have been a nightmare. I, not, I know that I would not have done it well. So I did a tight free motion stitch around each leaf. And I did a layer of batting. Remember a couple of sessions where I showed you how I did a double batting or a, a faux trapunto? Each leaf has two layers of batting, two layers. So the first thing I did was, here's my runner, because this is a bed runner. This is not a tabletop runner, but it's a bed runner. We have the piece top, the shadow, and then the leaf on top. And then underneath is one layer of batting and the edge is stitched. That's the first step is to stitch that top leaf to the top of the quilt top. Yay, more thread. All right, everyone say hello to Jacqueline. Let's see, same direction. I would have goofed up that. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully you're taking notes. All right, now the next step was to make the quilt sandwich. Now that the leaves are affixed, let me see, let me go back one. Let me hide that. Did I stitch the black? No, okay. Here is something that is very important in terms of stages. Notice in this stage, I've stitched the top leaf with a burgundy thread. I have not stitched the black shadow leaf yet. Now that I've made the quilt sandwich, I'm only stitching the top of the leaf with the veins and then taking black thread and stitching along the edge of the shadow and all the way around the leaf. The edge of the orange part of the leaf. So on the back of, I'll have to show you, I'm not sure if you can see it. 
he may not be able to see it. Hmm. Let's see. Nope, you can't see it there. Does that make sense, ladies? So the first step was to affix the leaves to the quilt top, shadow the main color leaf, in this case, orange, stitch the orange leaf down along the edge, then sandwich the top with the back and another layer of batting after I cut away the batting for the trapunto. Now we're stitching the veins for the leaf. Invisible thread, yes, would work. The reason why I used black thread was to continue with that shadow theme. So that even though all the shadows are going one direction, if you think about it, there's still going to be a slight darkness under the rest of the leaf. You're not going to see a lot, but you're still going to see a little bit. And so just doing one little line of thread around the rest of the leaf in black gives it that illusion. Let's see. Yes, I was tempted to cut the shadow leaf, but then I said, no, I better not, because if I needed to shift it, then I would have ruined the leaf and I couldn't shift it. So I kept them exactly the same size and then just shifted them, un shifted the shadow from underneath the top leaf. Thank you. So is the black leaf stitching only done? Let's see. So is the black leaf stitching is only done after all the quilt layers being stitched. The black stitching around the leaf is done once I've made the quilt sandwich. The quilt top, the leaves were stitched to the quilt top with only the thread that is the same color as the leaf, whether it was a bronze or orange or red, whatever color the main top leaf is, that's what was stitched to the top. And it was stitched to the top into a layer of batting underneath. Then that batting, excess batting was cut away so that I have a nice thick layer of batting under leaf, underneath the leaf only. Then I added the full layer of batting for the whole bed runner. Now the black, the shadow of the leaf is stitched to the top all the way around. Not only was it stitched on top of the black leaf, it was stitched along the edges of the orange leaf the, with black thread. And that was done to reinforce the idea that the leaf is not, is kind of resting on top of the fabric. Like you would see if you're, you see, you're walking in the park and you see leaves on the ground. They're not completely flat. They're all crumpled, right? And since they're crumpled, they're kind of raised. Does that make sense? Oh, Myra, you're welcome. I'm so glad it's helpful. So a lot of steps. Now, even though the leaf was stitched along the edge with the same color, I chose one color for all the leaves to stitch the veins. And that was a nice gold color. It could be any color you want. It could be clear thread, but the gold really helps. What do you ladies think? Yes, it looks like 3, 3D with the black stitched all the way around. Yep, exactly. All right, great. I know I explained that a couple of times. Uh, let's see. So let's go. I'm going to show you that's what it looks like in the back. 
So in the back, you can see the black thread that went all the way around and you see what was the gold thread that I used for the veins of the leaf. You don't see two um, outlines of a leaf. You only see one outline. And that's the black thread. Okay, good. I'm so glad. Because <laughs> I think I was confusing myself trying to explain it. So the first leaf was, the two leaves are stacked. And the, the leaf that's on the top we use the same thread color of that leaf on the top to stitch both leaves to the quilt top. When we do that, we're adding a layer of batting so that we can have a nice 3D effect. Once that's done, we cut along the edge to get rid of the excess batting. Then we bring in the full batting for the whole bed runner. And we stitch now the black thread around that quilt sandwich. So that's what you see now in the back. We have the black thread and we have the veins. All right. Now it's very clear. Okay. Whew. Sorry, ladies. It's hard to see it and understand when you can't really touch it and see it for yourselves, right? Yes, you may have to watch the replay. Showing the back makes it clear. Awesome. Is the bobbin thread the same color? Sheila, excellent question. The bobbin thread is the same for both. But what thread weight do you think I used for the black? Is the black wed thread weight, do you think it's the same as the thread for the veins, that weight, is it the same? I'll go back. Let's see, close that one. The thread weight. I did, I used a different thread weight. The black looks thinner. Yes. Can, yes, it's a bit heavier. And also notice too that with the veins, it's a heavier weight thread, it's 40 weight thread, but it's also double stitched. In order to do the veins, you have to go up and come down, go up and come back, go out and come back go out and come back. So it's not only a heavier weight thread, but it's also double stitched because of the way it's stitched. Hey, Bonita, you just made it awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Awesome, yay. Okay, so I think it's time to move on. Everyone understands how this one was made. I'm gonna, um, give you a little fun with seeing now that the leaves are all done separately now the background has to be stitched and the background was stitched based on the theme of the bed runner and the bed runner you can't tell but the size of it is 15 inches wide no, high by 63 inches long. 15 inches this way and 63 inches this way. And it's a seasonal bed runner. It goes from fall to winter. Fall to winter. And so what usually happens with leaves, you may have seen it in movies where the wind is blowing. So I use my design called Dots and Swirls to quilt the background. Love the swirls. 
Yeah, it looks like you can pick up the leads right off the runner. Yes. Pretty cool, huh? Move that out of the way. Yes. So that is dots and swirls. And so the leaves are swirling around in the wind and the 3D effect of them makes it look like they're running across the surface. Oh, Sharon, patterns. I love designing, but I'm not very good at writing patterns. I write them, but I'm very slow. I create things faster than I can write patterns. And eventually, if people ask enough, I will eventually write it. And the swirl is like the wind. Exactly, Myra. Exactly. But if you want to learn how to do these swirls, watch the video. There's a video on my channel. Just go to the playlist and you can learn how to do the swirls. Is there any frame with the petite raw edge less than a regular cotton? Yes. And that's why I usually will use a petite fabric for my applique because it's a denser um, weave. The weave is much tighter than um, other uh, co regular cottons. All right. Let's look at the back. Look at the back of this. What do you think about choosing this red Christmassy themed? It has little dots of metallic in it. I love the way it looks in the back. Yes, Myra. The other thing, too, is that the batiks have this nice um, modeling or texture and variations and colors that make for wonderful leaves. And yeah, the leaves on the back with the swirls. I pre-wash everything. Pre-wash, pre-wash. And for for batiks, especially batiks with very heavy colors, I use a dye fixative called Retain. I don't want that dye bleeding out. Even after you wash it, sometimes batiks still have a dye residue. So I use a dye fixative called Retain. R-E-T-A-Y-N-E. -E. Isn't that interesting with the swirls? You like that, Wilda? All right. Yes, it's reversible. Isn't that awesome? I just... It's a fun, fun project. And that's why I love free motion quilting so much. And often... I will pick a backing fabric that is a mid-value, a mid-tone. Especially if something is using a lot of different thread colors, I'm using a mid-tone value, a mid-value. Nothing too light, nothing too dark, so that all the colors will blend. There won't be any high contrast in the back. Yes, very, very hot water with retain. Very hot water. Mm -hmm. You just follow the instructions. Okay, now I want to show you something about this bed runner. I did not do the traditional binding. Sheila, you're so observant. Yes. If any of you have missed the previous live sessions, they're worth watching because I've been slowly building and sharing different techniques, even the dots and swirls. That design 
was stitched in another project with a similar technique with the batting where I used double batting just for a section of the quilt. And so you'll see a repeat in the building of techniques and the repeat of techniques, but with different um, results depending upon the project. All right, what I wanna show you is that instead of doing a traditional binding, I did a, um, oh my goodness, facing. It's called facing. Instead of traditional binding, I wanted facing where you just turn it over on the back. Okay, great. You got it. Oh, I'm so glad. I hope you do make it. I can't wait to see it. Have you ever faced a quilt? Let us know in the comments. Do you know what facing is? Facing is not necessarily used for bed quilts, but it can be. It's used mostly for art quilts, um, maybe for table runners or bed runners like this one. But I love facing because let me show you, I'm gonna come to live, full view. So you can get an idea how big this is. Okay. I think my hand span reaches the whole thing. Nope, it doesn't. Okay, here's the that end. And then here's the other end. So it's pretty big, right? It's almost as tall as a person. Okay, you've never faced a quilt. You don't know how it's done. All right, facing, no. Okay, so look at the edge. You see the edge? It's not your traditional binding. I used, again, black fabric because again, I wanted, I didn't want that red to show on the front while we're looking at the front. So facing is instead of a binding, you create almost like a frame I'll turn it around. Okay, create almost like a frame. You see that? Let's see if we can get up really close. It's not good lighting. Yeah, that's better, maybe. And look at that beautiful frame that it creates for the black. For the, I'm sorry, for the red. The black framing creates a beautiful frame. The black facing creates a beautiful frame for the back. Let's see. Oh, okay. I don't know how this red is coming off. Okay. It's kind of difficult to handle and sitting at the same time. <laughs> but you see how beautiful that facing is. I just love this facing. It's attached similar to the binding, but not the same way. The corners are overlapped. Sheila, I think you've done facing before. Did you do facing in one of my classes? Haha, <laughs> it looks hot pink instead of red. Yeah, I didn't think the lighting would show. That's a lot a lot of times why I don't show it live because the camera never really shows. It's sometimes better for me to show pictures. But I thought you might benefit from seeing the bed run alive and how big it is, even though the color was going to be off. It shows like two different quilts. Okay, awesome.
Okay, someone inside your Facebook group tried the facing. It's not hard to do. It's actually very, very easy. Maybe one day I'll do a tutorial. It's similar to that, Melody, that it's, you're basically stitching like you would on a binding. You're stitching it to the top first, to the front. And then you're bringing it over. The only thing that will, you will do differently is that this part will be shorter. You're only going to stitch it from about a half an inch from the edge so that you don't have a lot of bulk in the corner. Yes, please do a tutorial. Okay, so. That is one technique for a applique. I hope you enjoyed that technique. It had a lot of steps in it, a little bit more than some, but I think it was well worth it. What do you think? Well worth it, right ladies? It's such a beautiful way to make applique. And to get that nice, textured 3d effect now you can try this technique but try it on something small do one applique on one quilt block and make it a um placemat or a mug rug and see how you like the technique oh christine you like it great awesome thank you jenny fantastic all right, so we are going to switch now to a wall banner, a banner that you can put on your wall or on your door. I made this small banner. It's called my love banner. And this one was done with ruler quilting. Most of the applique that I showed you in the bed runner, and all of it, basically, except for the snow, snowflake at the very end of the bed runner. All of it was done with free motion quilting. On this banner, it's done with ruler quilting. Hey, Michelle, you're never late. I'm so glad that you can come. Whatever you missed in the beginning, just watching the replay. Everyone, welcome, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Wilda. All right. So the second one is with ruler quilting. The banner was pieced, sandwiched, and then ruler quilted with this serpentine ruler. I just love those curves. Then I did some applique, but applique with a ruler, a heart ruler. As you can see in the photo, I took some squares, put some stabilizer on them, and placed them on the runner. And once those squares or rectangles were placed, I then quilted with the ruler the heart design. Yay, I'm so glad everyone's welcoming Michelle. Awesome. So you see the white and the red, they have been quilted on top of the already quilted um, banner. So the banner was pieced, then quilted, then rectangles with stabilizer were placed on top of the quilted banner and I ruler quilted hearts on top of those rectangles right through the banner. All right. Can you see those hearts there? And I did a little extra stitching on the bottom of each heart to give them a little bit more dimension. All right. 
You see the heart template that up at the top. It's called Hearts of Plenty. It's by West uh, Westerly Design. It, it, it's in the Janome Ruler set. Janome had Westerly Design create a ruler kit sp specifically for them. And this one is Hearts of Plenty, and it's in the Janome Ruler set. But you can do this with any template. It doesn't have to be a heart. It could be um, circles if you want. Okay, let's see. You see that template. Have you ever stitched applique with a ruler? Have you ever stitched applique with a ruler? After it's stitched, then you just cut away with your duckbill scissors or whatever scissors you use to trim applique. This is another raw edge applique technique where the applique is created with the quilting template, with the quilting ruler. In this case, it's a heart. You haven't tried it before. And then you can see just cutting around that heart after it's stitched. Again, it's raw edge applique and I'm using batik fabrics, but it's also batik fabric that has a stabilizer on it. And that stabilizer, which is heat fused too, uh, will hold those fabric fibers together. You've only done blanket stitch on more edge. Okay. Sherry, it's all about easy for me when it comes to applique. <laughs> Again, I confess I'm not a fan of handwork or needle turn applique. What brand stabilizer? I use several types. I use heat and bond, and I also use... Um, Silky. Have you ever used Silky before? Silky brand. This one is a iron-on tearaway. And so you can get the kind that you prefer. You know, for a bed, you might want something light and soft. That's if, if it's permanent. If it's something that you can't tear away, like in this case, once it's stitched, you can't take it out. Uh, because I'm stitching it on top of a completely stitched banner. But it's something that's going to hang on the wall. And so I don't mind that it's stiff. Okay. Okay. You've never used it before. I like to try different things and see how they work. And sometimes I'm trying something new because when I go back to the store to get what I want. They don't have it, but I need something. And so then I try something new or there's something that's on sale. And then I'll say, okay, I'll try that because it's on sale. Okay, Wilda has used water stabilizer. Fabulous, and it works great. I like that too. All right, so there is a little shot of after the heart was stitched, you can see how that heart shape is created with the template. Okay, so Copper is asking, were the heat appliques batik fabrics? The heat uh, heart, you probably mean heart. Yes, all my appliques, raw edge, always, always. Petite. Petite. Yes. Okay. And are you ready to see the final piece? Here we go. That is the final banner. I love this banner. Family. The ones you live with laugh with and love. 
the photos that you see are my sister and her daughter. My sister and her daughter, Lillian and Amanda, my niece. My niece is at the top and my sister and her, her university photo. My sister is such a wonderful mother. She has raised two wonderful children. And when I was making this banner, I thought of them and how much love exists between them as mother and daughter. A mother's love, there's nothing like it. Would you agree? Isn't that? Ah, thank you, Sherry. You like that. Thank you. Very creative. Love the colors. Thank you. Your sister has a wonderful sister in you. Oh, copper. I wish I could grab a hold of you through the lens and give you a hug. Maybe one day we'll all get to meet in person. Wouldn't that be great to have a retreat? I have a dear sister in the Lord. She has a inn in Vermont. It's called the Vermont Inn. And she said to me before COVID and quarantine, she said, hey, Dina, why don't you come up to Vermont to, to my inn and offer a retreat? Would you ladies like to go to, to Vermont for a quilting retreat? Yes and amen, says Wilda. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yes, I would love to go to Vermont. Not during the winter, although that might be nice if as we're leaving, the winter would give us one little dusting of snow. But maybe spring or fall in Vermont, a quilt retreat. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Oh, it's the Vermont Inn. Go take a look at it. They have beautiful photos on their website and they're on Facebook. And she's such a sweet lady. You know what? She is someone who I can look at as someone who was early in my quilting journey. She is someone that encouraged me to quilt. And I met her at a special retreat center in Virginia. My dear friend, Wilda, who's in the chat, she invited me to this retreat and that's where I met Myra and, and other ladies um, at this quilting retreat. And so that's where I met her. And since then, she now has this retreat center um, in, in Vermont. And she'd like to do a quilting retreat. Let's make it happen. All right. Woohoo. Yes. <laughs> fall would be perfect. We could do the bed runner, right? For the fall fall retreat, right? That would be fun. Oh boy. Okay, so are you ready? Amazing thoughts for a trip. Yes. It could happen. It really could. You know, I'm going to talk with her again after all this COVID stuff is over and see how we can make that happen. You know, we were thinking about it in relation to the Vermont Quilt Show. Well, I think she says she's an hour away from the Vermont Quilt Show. I was wondering if we could do it around the same time. Uh, Jacqueline says, yes, retreat. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, now we're down to the last one. I've showed you two, Raw Edge with Free Motion Quilting, Chapunto, Shadow Effects, Veiny Leaves. We just saw another Raw Edge using a ruler, a heart ruler to do the applique for us. Now let's look at this one. Yes, we finally have come to the blanket stitch. 
the blanket stitch on this one was a lot easier than trying to do it on that leaf. Smoother, not as many sharp turns. So, and it was only four butterflies. So that made it go very quickly. Raw edge with a blanket stitch. So how many of you have done the blanket stitch on applique? Retreat, yes, yes, yes. I would love to do that retreat. Here's what it looks like now that it's in the quilt and it's been quilted. Did you notice I didn't do any fancy designs on the butterfly? I could have, like the leaf, leaf. I could have done some stitching on the butterfly. Aha, blanket is go. Oh, hey, Hillary, my Jordan. So glad you're here. Sorry that I missed you earlier. Yep, a lot of people are familiar with the blanket stitch. Jenny has done it. Copper has. What thread is around the butterfly? It looks thick. All right, so my favorite go-to thread is glide thread. It's a 40 weight. This was stitched on my sit-down long arm with Juki. Sit-down long arm, 2200. All right, you're quilting butterflies. Yay! Are you piecing butterfly blocks or are you quilting a butterfly? You like that I sewed around the butterfly. Yes, it it just gives it that little extra pop. It helps it stand out. Plus, it was strategic. Why do you think I needed to quilt around the butterfly? Okay, Lois has done the blanket stitch, great. When you see me turn my head, it's because I'm reading the comments. Now you would do with an embroidery machine. Okay, fantastic. Why do you think I stitched around the butterfly once it was sandwiched in the quilt? Copper says to stabilize the butterfly. It gives it dimension, that's true. It makes it pop, that's true too. Okay, Michelle, you're piecing a butterfly. It makes it stand out, that's true, Bonita, that's true. Define it from the other free motion, correct. Wow, you ladies are giving fantastic answers. All those relate to making the butterfly just beautiful, but there's a, a need, there's a reason, another other than aesthetics, other than pretty, there's a need, there's a reason why we must stitch around it. The blanket stitch goes around all the layers. No, the blanket stitch is only the top layer. I can go back to that photo. See, I did the blanket stitch before it was sandwiched. Okay, to quilt it. Yes, to hold the batting, that's it, to quilt it. That's it, Lois. Because I didn't quilt within the butterfly, I had to stabilize the batting. Remember we talked a couple of Fridays ago about batting. If my batting was, say, a cotton batting with two or three inches, a lot of times I will take out my ruler and I will measure the space and say, oops, according to the batting that I'm using, 
I must quilt inside this butterfly because the batting says I must quilt within two or three inches. Or if it was eight inches or whatever it is, six inches, I measure to make sure that I'm meeting that requirement for the batting. Hey, there's my sister, Cookie. Hello, beautiful. Thank you. Everyone, please say hello to my, my sister, my big sister, Cookie. I love her dearly. I was the little sister that hung around her all the time. She let me go hang out with her and her friends. Isn't she a good sister? <laughs> She's such an encourager. She's always encouraged me. Uh, love my sister. I miss her too. We haven't seen each other for two years. Yeah. She's in Houston, Texas. Yeah, I love her. Oh, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> so everyone, you got that. The You were correct. Stitching around the butterfly does so many things. Helps it pop, it defines it, but it was also necessary because of the batting. All right, now we have the big reveal. This is the final quilt. This is the final quilt. You only see one butterfly because remember there's only four. So there's one on each side. Oh, Sharon left. Okay, bye Sharon. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed you saying goodbye. All right. Here is again another petite quilt. Thank you, Copper. Something else I designed that I don't have a pattern for yet. Remember, I have a list. Yes, and that um, is one of my favorite um, batik backgrounds. It's not really, it's creamy. It's not necessarily white, white, and it's not um, too creamy, buttery cream. It's, it's in between butter and white. Yeah, it's a nice... It has lots of texture to it. So that is the butterfly. Oh, she's so sweet, my sister. <laughs> Cookie. Yes, isn't that interesting? I hope you are taking notice, just like Copper, that I'm combining rulers and free motion quilting. Sometimes we just need a little dab of ruler quilting to anchor a design, and then we can fill the rest with free motion. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, that is the last of the applique techniques. And would you believe we're at one hour? How did that happen already? And we didn't even play a game today. Wow, one hour. So ladies, if you have any questions, let's see if I can get this up and running. That should fill in. Thank you again for joining me. I hope that you got some great tips on applique. The time just flew by. Thank you, Wilda. Thank you, Copper. So glad you ladies could be here again. We really had fun tonight. Um, I got to know why some of you make quilts for babies, for family, for loved ones. Let me know if you have any interest in me covering another topic. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week. Um, oh, I'm glad you like the tips, Sherry. Wonderful. And you know what I like? You know, this is just the way I do it. 
we all do things according to what we like, what we enjoy, what we don't enjoy. We kind of skip over. So anything that I share that just is not for you, just take what you like and throw away the rest. You know, that's what it's all about, getting tips so that we can each enjoy quilting the way we will enjoy it for ourselves, right? Off-white. You have a wonderful weekend too. Thank you, ladies. So if you have a suggestion, this is going to be um, live, not live, but recorded on the channel. You can leave a comment on Facebook or underneath this video, or you can send me an email and just say what you'd like me to um, look at or share next time or any time in the future. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome, Sandra. Fantastic. I'm so glad. Have you seen Janome's rule of foot on the 7700? I've tried the older attached Janome rule of foot that I've shared in a previous video, but now I use the westerly rule of foot. I'm just accustomed to it and I have it. I like it, but it doesn't mean that you can't try a new one that comes out, but I just don't rebuy if something is working. I hope that's helpful to you. And remember, ladies, don't forget to like this video that helps YouTube. Share it with other people once it's recorded for replay. And don't forget that everything I share tonight, whether it's the AccuQuilt dies or the threads, everything that I share is in the video description box below on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, you'll have to come over to YouTube, come to the channel to get that information. And thank you to all those who buy me a coffee. It helps me to make these live sessions. You may know that even though YouTube, I can have a channel and it's free, it's not really free. It, there is some cost to it. So I appreciate those who see that and understand it and buy me a cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to work on the weekends. That's how I get to work on my quilts. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. I'm so glad that you were here. I will see you next week.